I work for Ethiopian Human Rights Project. Uh, Ethiopian Human Rights Project is uh, uh, it was based in the U.S. because because of the law that restricts that uh, this human rights organization can't work in Ethiopia. Uh, it was established in U.S. Uh, 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 back in 2015. Uh, now, uh, because there is change in Ethiopia, uh, we are in transition and uh, uh, the organization is now basing in Addis Ababa. Uh, uh, so we are regist re registering and um, now we are legally uh, working in Addis Ababa. Uh, with the name uh, uh, Center for Advancements and uh, Advancements of Rights and Democracy, which is uh, carved in short. Um, I was also a member of uh, uh, Zone 9 uh, Blogging Collective. Uh, Zone 9 uh, was found in 2012. Uh, I, I co-found it with uh, my friends. Uh, uh, in 2012, it was uh, Donen used to campaign on social medias uh, frequently uh, about uh, human rights, uh, uh, constitutional rights, and so many things, so many issues. Um, and in 2014, uh, I and uh, five other uh, were arrested and uh, charged with terror, and we spent 18 months uh, in prison uh, defending our charges. Uh, and of uh, course, uh, since then, we were, I, I was working on Ethiopian human rights project. Now we are in Addis Ababa with a new name, with a broad concept, uh, and now we are starting this new project in Addis. The, the current human rights situation in Italy uh, relatively better. Uh, uh, I mean, Ethiopia, the youth uh, protested for the last uh, three, four years. It was a deadly protest. Security forces have killed so many uh, uh, I mean, people, individuals, like activists, uh, and arrested in, in 10,000. Uh, so, like, we have been in a state of emergency for, like, uh, three times. So, it, it was very, very worrisome. I mean, uh, even for us, it, it was very scary. We couldn't uh, do our job like uh, the, the there was I mean a grave gross human rights violation and in in our capacity it was hard to even document all of those work or those violations so we have tried our best uh, uh, but it was it was there are many many undocumented uh, human rights violations. So, uh, compared to what we have been, uh, the current situation is better. Like, for example, after the 2005 election, uh, the Ethiopian government, uh, the election was disputed, like, uh, it, it was a rigged election in 2005. So, the Ethiopian government uh, introduced new laws that stifled uh, uh, any any jobs and that uh, uh, oppress any jobs and individuals in the, the whole uh, uh, free space so uh, for example the, there is an anti-terror terrorism proclamations and uh, there is a, a civil society and charity law i mean these laws and there is also a media law 
and these three laws have played a major role uh, uh, that any individual who express uh, uh, openly in, in public or any organization who, who does a human rights work uh, was stifled by that law. Like the government used these three laws to intimidate uh, the organizations and political figures, activists, and uh, media outlets, especially newspapers. So, I mean, these laws were a major tool to oppress citizens. So, and uh, like right now, uh, after the, the youth protested and demanded change, uh, there is a, a reform going on, uh, uh, forces in, inside, uh, reformists inside the ruling party emerged and now uh, the new prime minister, Dr. Abiy Ahmed is uh, leading that reform. Uh, and I mean, he, he said a very uh, uh, promising uh, things like I mean, and you, uh, somehow uh, I'm witnessing that 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 as well. Like for example, the the, the laws are the anti-terror proclamation is uh, it is still uh, effective uh, on effect, but. Uh, there, there is another anti-terror proclamation. Uh, there is another uh, anti-terrorism draft laws uh, uh, waiting to be ratified by the the, the parliament. Uh, also, there is the media uh, law is uh, about to repeal, uh, and the new civil society and the charity law is now on effect and. And uh, that I am a witness that we have passed that the new law and we got uh, registered legally. So there is there is change. Uh, we are very uh, not only the government that violates human rights, uh, uh, human rights, but also there are uh, many non-state actors, many powerful. Uh, uh, political activists or informal groups that always uh, uh, threaten uh, uh, any group or individuals. The government is somehow weak right now because there is a, a political change in, in Ethiopia and uh, uh, this the, the, there is also nationalism on the rise, ethnic uh, nationalism on the rise. Uh, so the government uh, is weak to control that that nationalism, and this nationalism are supported by some prominent uh, political activists, uh, and. Uh, it is very, very hard to control to control these uh, informal groups, uh, and we, we are witnessing uh, so mob justice, ethnic-based attacks uh, uh, across the country. So it's not only uh, the government right now that violates uh, human rights. Uh, there is also these informal groups and individuals uh, are uh, uh, a major human rights violators in uh, violet, that uh, that violates human rights in the country right now. So uh, non-state actors are very very uh, dangerous uh, more than. The government right now. I mean, the situation. The, the, 
uh, nanostate actors, uh, actors are more uh, threatening the, uh, the, the community, I mean, individual citizens than the governments right now. So it's not only the government. Uh, I mean, we are expecting, uh, I'm, I mean, we are witnessing changes in the government, but also the, the non-state actors are getting uh, very, very powerful and they are uh, dangerous for uh, human rights in the yeah. country. Yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't receive any threats uh, from the government uh, uh, for the last one year, uh, uh, which is a good sign. <laughs> Uh, but there are regions that uh, I'm afraid to go uh, in the country. So I only uh, base in Addis, like uh, I can't move uh, around uh, the country, I mean, around uh, other regions, like, uh, for example, uh, I have a colleague uh, whose name is Bafkaru. I mean, there are regions that he can't go because he has received many uh, death threats because of, I mean, this, this nationalism is on the rise because, so anyone, any groups can, uh, I mean, trade you. And uh, it's, it's a risky business. Uh, to go to these regions, so we we keep avoiding uh, going to these regions. Uh, uh, so I mean, there are arrests. I mean, there are uh, activities that uh, activists does even in Addis, uh, and the government is arresting them. Some of them, uh, but. Uh, to us, still, uh, uh, we haven't received any, any, uh, as a group, any threat from the government side yet. <laughs> so, uh, the protest uh, happened, uh, uh, that 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 starts from 2014, actually. So there was a project that uh, that expand the capital city of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, and the use the outcast of Addis Ababa start protesting that um, uh, farmers are displacing from uh, their land uh, and so on and so on. So. Uh, and that that protest uh, ex expanded uh, through across Oromia, uh, the, the biggest region in Ethiopia, and uh, and the other region uh, uh, in Amhara. So I mean, this these two regions are the most populous region uh, and uh, very influential. Like they, they cover around 60, 70 percent of the population. Uh, the population, so they have start protesting, uh, condemning the the government brutality uh, against the protester, uh, condemning the, the I mean the the one ethnic group uh, domination was the country uh, and demanding uh, better living condition, a better, uh, I mean, access to state, uh, state resources uh, and so many other things. So, I, I mean, the, the, the ruling party have, have killed so many protesters actually, in, in peaceful protesters. There are uh, many live 
videos online that shows how the government was brutal in the way they respond to those demonstrations and protests uh, across the country. The way that uh, uh, the reformist group inside the ruling party EPRDF uh, have emerged and and start listening to uh, the people's grievance. Even uh, even they take the people's agenda and uh, make it their own, and start fighting uh, the old guards uh, inside the, ru the ruling party. And one of the, the reformist uh, leader. Uh, was the current Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. So one of the things he does when he came to power is he, uh, actually before he came to power, I mean the the the, the, polit the ruling party was forced to, re to release many political prisoners uh, from prison. So and when he when the new prime minister came to power, he he called all the rebel groups who who, who were in the jungle, who based in the jungle. Uh, I mean, most of the rebel groups were in Eritrea, the, the neighboring country. He called uh, he called them in and. Negotiate with them. They agreed to work uh, uh, peacefully inside the country. And I mean, these these rebel groups uh, were. I mean, some of some of the rebel groups who I mean were labeled as terrorist organization by the parliament, and that the 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 same parliament after the new prime minister. Came to power in the same parliament have uh, revoked uh, the terrorism labeling from these organizations, and this organization came to Ethiopia. Now they are forming uh, new parties, political parties, and uh, they are working um, peacefully at least. So, I mean, the protests they use have. Uh, forced the government uh, to somehow to uh, respect uh, human rights uh, or and to listen to the people's grievance and to change in the way that that benefits uh, uh, the country. So, I mean. Many, many people have paid a lot of sacrifice uh, to see th th these changes. Uh, it was, it was, I mean, a huge uh, success for for uh, the for Ethiopians. I mean, uh, I mean, there are also uh, worrisome uh, situations like. Uh, we are witnessing nationalism right now in Ethiopia. Uh, we have many ethnic groups in Ethiopia, and those those ethnic groups are have. Uh, I mean, activists uh, they uh, they lead the use, uh, and at some point, uh, uh, we we hear some communal violence. I mean, we are, we have witnessed, uh, I mean, number of uh, displacements uh, and uh, communal violence in across the country. But the in the government that we have been witnessing a good and a really positive signs. I mean, from uh, the other actors also, we are witnessing. A very uh, dangerous uh, situation that may lead the country uh, into chaos.
So as I said before, human rights, was, human rights project was found in the US. Um, uh, I and my uh, uh, five friends were, were in prison and uh, a co-defendant who have been charged in absentia uh, with us formed it, uh, found it in, in, in the US. Uh, so she escaped uh, uh, prison before because she wasn't, uh, apparently she wasn't uh, in town where, when we got arrested, when we got detained. So she found it, she founded it uh, when she was in US. Uh, so uh, in 2000, after we, we got released, uh, we joined uh, Ethiopian Khmer Rice project. So, so one of uh, the, the major work that we did was uh, documenting uh, human rights violations. I mean, uh, we we have witnessed uh, so many human rights violations uh, when we were in prison. So we we start documenting those violations. We produced a lot of uh, videos, uh, uh, cartoons, uh, uh, and and we. Uh, I mean, we did a lot of campaigning uh, online uh, because there is no space and because the law prohibited uh, any civil organizations to be registered in, in the country that received fund from foreigners. We couldn't get, reg get registration here. Uh, as I said, one of the things one of the bad things that the, the previous administration produced was introducing uh, the charity, the civil society and charity law, which says, says that any civil society organization cannot receive uh, a, a funds from foreigners. Uh, that's really uh, weaken all the civil societies based in Ethiopia. So, uh, so we couldn't get registered here. So she was in the US and she found it there. It was registered in the US, but then we, we were, I mean, we were working from uh, Addis Ababa. I mean, we have documented a lot of, a lot of uh, human rights violation, and we have uh, we have been monitoring uh, court trials. Uh, I mean, there were thousands of political prisoners, and it was even very hard to to monitor all trials. But I mean, we have tried our our best and documented. I mean, uh, every uh, political motivated trials, uh, uh, and I mean we have documented that. Uh, we have uncovered a lot of torture stories. Uh, as we were in in prison, and as we were like uh, faced somehow torture while we were in prison. I mean we have heard so many so many horrible stories. So we have witnessed so many uh, horrible stories in, uh, in prison. So uh, what we did was, well, when we get out, when we got out from prison, that we start working on this project uh, until uh, the current administration takes power then uh, uh, one of our co-defendants who have been charged in absentia uh, uh, came to Ethiopia and we, we, we got uh, the new law was introduced, which is 
uh, the civil society law was repealed and so we got registered uh, in Ethiopia uh, and we opened office and I mean because the Ethiopian Human Rights Project was somehow a project level, we, we kind of uh, changed the name uh, and we want to focus on human rights as well as democracy. So we named it uh, Center for Advancements of Rights and Democracy. Uh, and that's, I mean, our story. As I said before, the nationalism is on the rise. Well, I mean, we, we are witnessing dangerous speeches on social medias. Uh, also, there is a gap uh, uh, on how to define hate speech, uh, what's, what's a speech and what's not. But I mean, our, our, our people's I mean, media literacy as well is very, uh, uh, low. So, I mean, with the, with the current uh, project, we are working on documenting uh, and monitoring uh, hate speech uh, online and any other media outlets and monitoring these prominent uh, activists and prominent uh, politicians uh, is one of our 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 task. Uh, uh, we have already recruited uh, interns and volunteers, uh, and we are working on documenting those those uh, uh, contents. Especially, I mean, Facebook has played a major role in in Ethiopia. I mean, uh, because there was no any independent media. Uh, in Ethiopia, all people, I mean, all citizens were on Facebook to express themselves. And uh, it also helped the change as well. Like, uh, it, it was, it is, it is undeniable that Facebook has played a positive role in Ethiopian politics to get organized to uh, to uh, uh, I mean to send information to the people and to get information as easily. So uh, there is also a negative uh, role uh, we have we are witnessing uh, hate speech and other other uh, uh, speech like uh, it it could it it might not be hate but the some uh, with 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 the media literacy rate with the media literacy rate uh, our people couldn't uh, identify what hate speech is and what's not hate speech so uh, some of them are dangerous speech, some of them are not hate speech, but some of them are hate speech. So we are, we are already starting start working on documenting these uh, 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 contents, like especially we are focusing on medias. Uh, we are also uh, uh, planning to uh, uh, train uh, journalists and any ad, any media stakeholders uh, about media literacy and uh, uh, hate speech so you are we are i mean we are optimistic that before the next i mean will will held will there will be election in 2020 and we are hoping that this might uh, this might decrease uh, before uh, before election, because I mean, election is sensitive. I mean, the work has to be done now uh, before we reach to there. So uh, the the role of the international community uh, was, I mean, as a group, 
we have benefited from the international community. Uh, when we were arrested, the international community has, uh, f uh, especially the international organizations, have have fighted, uh, have fight our fight, like fought our fight. Uh, uh, they he, they used to attend our court trials. Uh, they used to release reports. Uh, I mean, they have played a major role. Uh, I mean, I, I'm seeing now they are, they are also uh, optimistic that the current change, uh, with the current change, uh, the, the international community's role should be uh, supporting uh, a, a major, I mean, they should support these law reforms, they should support the medias uh, in the way that, uh, that respect the sovereignty of the country as well. Uh, but uh, it was undeniable. Uh, the international community was there when we were in trouble. And now uh, the international communities played a major role in, in this change as well. Uh, uh, I mean, the role should be supporting independent organization as well as the, uh, the government. But they they, sh they have to they have to, to listen uh, the people as well i mean the government has all the resources uh, it might uh, deceive anyone uh, uh, i mean the international community should should uh, listen to or i mean should listen to the the people on the ground and provide the necessary support.